covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. Microsoft no longer sees PlayStation maker Sony and Nintendo as the biggest competition for its Xbox platform. Phil Spencer, Microsoft's head of gaming, said he now considered Amazon and Google as his top rivals because of their cloud computing infrastructure. He believes their transitional rivals, Nintendo and uh, traditional rivals, Nintendo and Sony, are out of step with the future of gaming. He said, quote, when you talk about Nintendo and Sony, we have a ton of respect for them, but we see Amazon and Google as the main competitors going forward. That's not to disrespect Nintendo and Sony, but the traditional gaming companies are somewhat out of position, end quote. With cloud gaming, players don't need to buy a games console. Instead, the games are run on servers in huge data centers with the footage streamed over the internet to a TV, computer, smartphone, or a tablet. It means players don't need to buy discs or download games and software updates, which can take a long time. Google entered the home gaming market in 2019 with its Stadia streaming service. The company's vast cloud computing business means that it has the necessary infrastructure in place, but critics say the lineup of games on Stadia Stadia is currently sparse. While Amazon and Apple offer games on their app stores and Apple offers a monthly subscription, they don't currently offer a cloud gaming service. However, Amazon also operates an enormous cloud computing business and is rumored to be developing a game service. Sony has offered its PlayStation Now cloud gaming service since 2014, letting gamers stream more than 700 titles to a PS4 console or PC. However, it currently streams games in 720p resolution. By contrast, Google Stadia can stream its games at up to 4K resolution. NVIDIA has officially launched its GeForce Now streaming service after months of testing, and both Sony and Microsoft have already announced that they are still working on new games consoles for home. Totally demonstrates the shift in how things are being, uh, how technology is being provisioned. I feel old, I guess, in the fact that my brain doesn't get it. Like, I don't understand. Like, I'm still really locked into consoles. Well, it's mind-bending. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've been sold for so many years that the biggest, most powerful console is going to give you the best gaming experience. Now we're being told, oh, well, you can do it on your phone. You can do it on this little $100 device. You can do it on anything. Oh, and then you can transition over to your computer, which doesn't even have to be a good computer. It can be a Chromebook. Yeah. Right. What? I think the difference, though, and I mean, admittedly, I have not explored Google and Amazon's gaming services, so I can't speak from firsthand knowledge. Sure. But the ability to go offline is what separates the two. Oh, okay? yes. But, that, when are, yes. But, but maybe that's the idea is that we're never offline anymore. Well, uh, and sure we are, but do we really? But when we're at that point, our, it's just... We're always connected, Jeff. But that We're is, always connected these days. You're right. We are always connected, but that's, 5G, 6G. But that's an assumption of um, necessary connectivity. I, like, we see this with our kids all the time. Mm-hmm. They play games that are not online. Mm-hmm. It's downloaded, and that's it. Like, sure. Yeah. My, Minecraft is a great one for kids that are younger, where they're playing Minecraft. It's not going online. I mean, you could go to realms and stuff, but <laughs> the difference here is... yeah. If you're going to go with the cloud-based computer uh, uh, gaming services, you're stuck to a couple of things. You're stuck to what they offer Mm -hmm. from the choices and the graphics and all that kind of stuff, which I think, again, I don't know from firsthand, would be subpar compared to what you can pull out of, say, you know, an Xbox One S or, you know, PlayStation 5 with with their graphics. I mean, I can't see playing like Red Dead Redemption 2 on my phone you can't you're see it because you right. haven't seen it yet let, let me just I, like, say okay. still it's from a technological perspective everything's going cloud <clears throat> yes but the the quality so you're saying will it look as good so the quality is not the video the video is your my tv is 1080p so it's 1920 by 1080p regardless of how powerful my system is or right. not so yet for some reason, if I use a first-gen Wii, 
versus a PlayStation 4, mm -hmm. I'm going to notice a quality difference in of the course. PlayStation. And, and sure, it's a different system. And, and so it is apples right. to oranges. But what I mean is the power of that more powerful system, even though my TV never changed resolution, it's still the same resolution. The video quality is still the same. Right. Okay. But it looks so much better because that one is so much more powerful. So now take that and put it into a cloud server where this cloud server is still streaming 1920 by 1080 P mm -hmm. to, to my 1080 P TV. Mm -hmm. And yet it has so much power. Yes. Like it's a multi billion dollar system versus my little $400 right. console. Right. So, so the, the, the resolution is not the bottleneck now. Our, right. our internet is capable of streaming 4K video in real time with no latency. Right. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. So now put a back end in there that is so powerful that I can do that on my cheap device. Yeah. And on any device, and I can transition from device to device, I don't have to buy anything in particular to be able to use my yes. games and the transition is happening but the transition is going to be difficult for people like me who still like to go to the store and buy a game and yeah. and i actually kind of and if they hesitate. go out of business you take it with you and put it on yeah it and, I, yes. and yeah. I go i hesitate even buying digital copies of games like yeah. i like to have the actual game mm -hmm. but i understand that the future is is coming up quick and mm -hmm. i'm still gonna buy a ps5 sure. but i'm gonna also likely play games on stadia <laughs> right yeah and that's that's an interesting point i, I want to just reiterate what you just said which is i'm going to also play video games yes. on stadio stadia so i don't think that we're replacing that offline phone device I think we're supplementing it and saying, yeah, an enhancement. hey, now, okay, you, you can you can also, when you're connected to the internet, play games that you can't play when you're offline that are like high end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's where, okay, maybe this is just another con another platform. Oh. We all have multiple platforms. Well, they have that for right? VR. I wonder if they'll have, like... Now, here's no, the latency is too high for VR. Here's the question I would you, have. Gotta be able, it's got to be able to track you. With this. Right now. So, I mean, like you've brought up VR, which, you know, totally That's makes in sense. in the far future, I suppose. Yes. <laughs> what about things like frame rate? Like, as you said, 60p you know, 4K, that's pretty good to me. No, but <laughs> no, yeah, I, I hear you, but you're talking about the screen resolution. I mean, if your internet can't keep up, it's going to impact your gameplay. Do, sure. Do you remember yeah. when we, it used to be like, oh, I'm lagging so bad. Yeah. Like, are we, <laughs> yeah. Is, is this opening yeah. the door to go back to <laughs> lagging? Are my, are my kids going to go... Yes. <clears throat> However, consider this as, and I know we, we do need to move on to the next story, but consider that the very companies that are pushing the technology shift are the same companies who are controlling the introduction of like Google's gigabit fiber to the home. Right. Right. So yeah, if that's the, so, you know, it's going to perform well. It's like you, you, you just know that that's what they're driving toward. And, and, they're not going to build a service that's going to fail based on that. This latency is a big thing. Sure, for sure. Yeah. And because this is internet based, it's going to be it's going to resolve the cross platform compatibility issues. It's an interesting thing though because you have to remember that this is not game streaming, this is video streaming. Mm -hmm. We've already proven through YouTube and through everything else that video streaming is great these days. Yep. There's no latency on videos like like really in real time if, the, if it was real time. So they've created real time video streaming service that has the interactivity of controls mm -hmm. and a control doesn't take a lot of bandwidth. No. So it's like it's instant as long as you don't have high pings. Right. As long as you don't have latency on your Internet connection. And that's the key thing. And so they'll be driving ISPs to support their codecs and yeah, we're, we'll see an evolution in that kind of thing. It's going to be that's, interesting. That's gonna interesting. We're in it like a cuspy kind of time now. Yeah. Oh, very cool. If you've tried Stadia or any other cloud-based service, comment below. Let us know if you've been contemplating it. Maybe post why you haven't tried it yet. Mm -hmm. What's holding you up?